Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you once again for joining us for uh, EMD UK uh, webinars. Today, we will be talking about This Is Me, which is about how we can tackle imposter syndrome. It's brought to you today by EMD UK, you're the national governing body for group exercise and I care, I move. Just a little bit of housekeeping as we always do before we start. In a few minutes, we'll do go through the introductions of the panelists today. Then we'll go through onto the main discussion piece and finally ending with a Q&A at the end. Although um, I know Helen will be asking you to join in throughout the, the webinar today as well. So let's kick things off with introducing Helen. So Helen, if you want to introduce yourself, please. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, my love. So nice to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. Thank you for coming. So Helen, would you like to tell yourself a little bit about, because I know about you, how I met Helen was on stage as somebody standing with imposter syndrome <laughs> in my first ever demos. Um, I think it was a leisure industry week. Yeah, I looked God. over, scared stiff, and saw this beaming smile off to the side. And uh, she's helped me ever since. So I thought it was brilliant to be able to bring you on. So if you want to tell us a little bit about your background, that would be amazing. <laughs> now, that was hilarious because that, that was my classic imposter syndrome because I was on stage demonstrating for Gravity UK at the time. And um, I was the only one that had a club. Everybody else was famous fitness presenters. And, and I had such a, a crush on uh, Michael Steele as well. I just <laughs> love him, I love him. And I just was like completely out of my comfort zone because I'm just a club, I'm just a club owner. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know anything about presenting fitness. I was the tallest, the fattest of all the girls in the, and the boys probably. Um, and uh, yeah, my that was a big imposter syndrome. I've been in the fitness industry for over 20 years. I trained in America, I lived in the States with my husband and we're gonna have, I'm gonna tell you more about me and my family um, during the next hour. Uh, but I've run my own club. I specialize in pro-aging and uh, working with people who are older. So that's midlife and yeah, we are midlife um, and beyond. So I, I spend a lot of time working in falls prevention and end of life work as well. I'm based in Cornwall, have a lovely team and um, I have previously had a bigger club with 22 staff and now there's a small, of our, a small group of us and I use external organisations to support my business um, but I'm not just a fitness instructor I am so much more than that you and are I'm indeed find out about that now. <laughs> brilliant and obviously for those who don't know me already I'm Sue Wilkie I'm the head of instructor development at EMD UK with a background in fitness that has gone on what, for over 30 years from presenting through to teaching through to uh, lecturing and everything so that's what's led me here today so I think I wanted to bring Helen on board because I know that at every point of my journey from the I'm just an instructor stepping on stage to do a my first ever class through to I'm just a presenter, I'm just a lecturer, I'm just, it, that word's always there and still to this day when I have conversations with people like DCMS on behalf of Group X, I'm just this person, what am I doing have, asking these questions and Helen has helped me a few times when I've had that, she picked up the phone to me and I just blurted out to her. So she, she's the voice of wisdom. And I think it'll be something great that we can all talk about because I'm sure all of us have experienced it at some time. So thank you, Helen. <laughs> so um, just a slight change today. Um, we're, we're trying out a new function on our webinars, guys. There's a poll at the bottom. So it's just for us to grab some data from and see how many people have suffered from it. So throughout, if you can see it, it should be at the bottom level of your screen where you'll see participants, Q&A, polls, chat, and the, the share screen. So basically, if you want to answer the polls, fantastic. If you want to chat between you, you can keep it in the chat box. And any Q&A sticks to the Q&A box. That would be amazing. Oh, I would like to hand over to Helen. So Helen, we, we've kind of done our intro already of how we got to know each other and how it appeal so let's just crack on straight away absolutely I'm, I'm going to share my screen with you now um so bear with bear with 
So you can still see me and you can still see that, right? We're yeah. all, everything's working. Great. I want to talk to you about being an involuntary swindler because that's really what it, what we're in the, the set about. We are all here because um, most of us at some point have pretended to be something we're not. So I want to introduce you to me and my family. And this is when we start to interact. What do you see in this photograph? Please write in the chat. Now, if because you're like, what? what's she on about? What do you see in this photograph? <laughs> you can see, you have to tell me what they're seeing. Happy, oh, you're about happy couple, happiness, happiness smiling couple, love, happy couple, love, great, Beautiful. medals, success. I like that one, success. success yes. Yeah. So, Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me tell you about imposter syndrome. This photograph was taken at um, the Houses of Parliament. This was a couple of years ago and it was Black Friday. Okay, that's fine. My husband had just lost a massive contract to his company that was a lot of money that afternoon. And my dad had just died. Wow. So the world is not what we think it is. We are surrounded by imagery that makes us feel completely out of context and that we do not belong. And it's the worst part of us. We are, and it's not our fault. We are imposters all the time. And we had to that night just smile through. And I know, so the dad thing, he had been quite unwell for a while. Um, it was just like you couldn't, it was the worst case scenario. The worst scenario that we ever expected was for him to die this night. And my dad two days beforehand said, do it, you have to be there. So it was a bit of a tough one. Wow, that's really Imposter tough. syndrome. Yeah. But, and the great thing about imposter syndrome is that when you start to understand more about it, you learn to control the beast. So today, because most of you don't know me from Adam, most of you have no idea who I am. You've never seen me on the presenter network, um, but I am prolific on social media. So we're going to come in with a couple of assumptions. Okay. We've definitely been on our ninth date together. So <laughs> in other words, we've had coffee. We've probably had a wine or two. And if you do know me, you know, I like a wine and um, we're friends. We may have swapped deep, dark secrets. And we've definitely talked about ridiculous things together. So, and what I'm saying is that we're so good at putting up showtime and particularly the fitness industry. We are all teeth and pits. Yeah. We're always like it. We're always like, da da. So let's just cut through that and let's just talk some reality around feeling crap as an imposter that you don't belong and you're scared. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've got a couple of promises. So when Sue asked me to do this, I um, made a few deals with myself. What do I want you to take away uh, from today's session? And I want you to ask questions. But I do definitely want you to take some notes down because I'm going to throw a knowledge bomb at you, a whole bunch of stuff that might help you with your business. This presentation you can have afterwards, I don't mind at all. Um, and um, so there's a lot of words in some of the slides. I'm not gonna talk, read it word for word. It is there for your reference after we've spoken. It's about feeling like a fraud, that we don't belong. Let's have a talk about standing in your own power and that fear of failure. And that that's the thing, fear stops us doing so many things in our lives. And the hours of regret, when you reflect back of the things that you didn't do because you were too scared. And that stems from everything from a night out, right because you've got nothing to wear and I feel fat right the way through to opportunities to go and really accelerate your business because you were too scared because why me I can't I, I just don't deserve it and I really resonate with that Helen myself because it wasn't until I I became div divorced in my 40s that I actually thought I need to get out there and do more I, I hid behind that whole I'm not good enough the whole time so it's only been the last like 10 years that I've actually found that stand in my power and let's challenge and step out of that comfort zone so very true and and and, and to, to mirror that um 
having an epiphany because sometimes when you've got when you've lost everything mm -hmm. um so and that that could be and you know that's metaphorically speaking when you hit that wall that actually might be the start of you uh finding yourself and and actually working on that inner critic so that's really important so it could be a life change like um your divorce or it could be illness or it could be a pandemic that's completely knocked you for six mm -hmm. in terms of your business and your lifestyle and it's going to accelerate you and, and catapult you in a different direction because you can yeah, and that's absolutely. the important thing so yeah. so albert einstein believed he was an involuntary swindler so that's where the phrase came from and and it always makes me chuckle when i hear that because i'm very good at being an imposter um and even questioned why am i here um presenting this to you 20 minutes ago so um so some of these messages that I'm going to talk about today includes making an impact and we myself and Sue spoke about this recently. Impact is something the fitness group X community um, haven't really appreciated and it's a massive and powerful tool mm -hmm. that we will talk about today and it's something that I want you to take forward with you. So today we're going to talk about your impact and we're also going to talk about the things that don't work as well as the things that do work. And one of the biggest things that I want you to take away with you is that you keep moving forward. Sometimes our imposter syndrome is so huge and the terror is so great that we are unable to move forward. So today we're going to look at not freezing because that holds you back and moving forward. Absolutely brilliant. So this is what I'm hoping you'll learn. <laughs> your why. So let's start with this one. So this is about authenticity. We all see what goes on in social media. Most of us, we are drilled in the fitness industry to be prolific on social media. And um, there's some people that we really resonate with and some we see right through. So what's your why? And this is where we do a little bit of work and I'd like you to comment on your chat. Tell me a story of a moment where you have delivered a session, a class, whatever it is, and you've had such feedback that it's reminded you of why you do what you do. So just give yourself a moment or two and have a think, reflect back and put it in the chat box if you can. It'd just be really nice to hear from you. <clears throat> I tell a story. Um, in fact, I shared it with um, Pat, who's my my uh, wing woman, and she works in business with me. Hi, Pat, I know you're watching today. Um, I tell Pat, I told Pat this story the other day. So, in spite of all my own successes in my world, um, there was something that really stuck in my mind recently. I covered a Zumba Gold class for for Pat. It wasn't my class; it was her Pat, um, her class, her people, and. Um, and it's Zumba Gold, it was older group of women who were honestly dreadful at Zumba Gold. Honestly, they had no sequence in, couldn't put their right foot in front of their left. It was absolutely hilarious. I've never laughed so much. It was wonderful to watch these women. And at the end of the session, because it was like herding cats and trying to get them to travel right and left in the, in the room was hilarious. And it reminded me of why I do what I do. Um, because I know those, it, it wasn't about the exercise, it was about the community that we created. And I think that's what you got to, what we forget sometimes when we're standing up there, yeah, you know, everyone's looking at me, but actually it's their experience and their escape from a class, from their day-to-day -day life to come and just unleash. And, and it's all about them. I, I even, from every stage of my life through to even now, I, last week I had a little bit of a moment and it was kind of like, what is my why? And it was instructors. That's why you pull in the hours, it's instructors, because you're all inspiring the end user so therefore I have to keep working for you guys. And it, it's really, but at every stage from teaching a class, stepping on stage, and there's some great ones coming now. I don't know, Helen, if you want, there's so many coming through. It's probably gonna have to watch them afterwards. Just, just read a couple for me. I don't, I'm not even sure I can read them because they're moving up so quickly. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Um, seeing my most wonderful 87 year old client push up into a down dog. When she first came to see me, she couldn't lift her knees from the floor to see her see her strength improve so much and the smile on her face was just brilliant um let's have a look a mental health nurse that had been coming to my sessions for a little while approached me after a session to thank me 
just a fitness instructor for everything I do as it helps her mental health. I mean, there, there's hundreds coming through. There's so many. I, I'm trying to keep up with them all. I want, I want you to capture that. I want you to remember that because you, you must always come back to that why, because there are days when you feel like you're up against it. You worthless is, is a phrase that I hear all the time. Um, and, you know, when you have someone like somebody from the NHS that comes to your class, you feel humbled. Oh, mental health nurse, what do I know? Um, you are changing people's lives. And you must remember that when you take when you leave today, you've got to remember the impact that you have. And we're going to move across to that in a second. The other thing I want to talk to you about today is yet. There's this thing and look it up. I mean, I, I can show you a million TED talks, but there's this thing called mindset. And you are very good at this because we are in the fitness industry. We are focused. We know what we want. And we, we, we're very good at talking the talk, right? Mm -hmm. But we have this inner dialogue that goes on. I can't do that. And I'll give you the classic one that I've heard a lot over the last year. I can't do tech. I can't do Zoom. I can't yeah. do filming from my front room. Um, I'm, I'm not a digital expert. So it's a simple thing because we are telling our subconscious self that we're, we can't do it. We're not worthy, um, you know, cause we came into this industry because we love fitness, um, not because we want to run businesses and not because we can do accounts um, and not that we can be a post lady and send out park use to people or <laughs> suddenly become an expert in how to get your music to work through your devices and reach all your people. We yeah. didn't know any of that. We just taught fitness. That's just what we do. So it is language. Language is a very powerful part of what this is about and imposter syndrome is about. Yet a year ago, I would have never imagined I could get a 96 year old on Zoom. So he was like, I can't do, I can't do digital. I didn't even know what a device was. But now not only, he doesn't come to my classes often. Do you know why? Because he's busy doing Zoom church and Zoom <laughs> cards. And, Zoom. and it's like, oh my God, the impact. So the social value of what we've just done is not only get somebody active who's 96 online, but actually we've expanded his own community as a result of the pandemic, as a result of being their community fitness instructor. So yeah. your impact is so powerful. And this is the thing you must, must keep coming back to that for we we are so good at putting ourselves down and it you know there's a bigger social economic thing here about how much we get paid and so on and so forth but actually your impact is so strong it is so important and if you remind yourself each day that this is why you do what you do you yeah. will manage to dial down and, and I'm, I'm going to touch on a point here that we're very good at doing which is a negative how many of you have been to a class and heard one negative and you fixated on that one negative feedback for weeks afterwards? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh my God, what should I be doing? Why am I here? That sets it off. Yeah. And you might have 29 other people who will come back day in, day out. It's, yeah. And we always fixate on that one negative. Um, yeah. and, and how I came across that, I changed it to, I write a positivity journal. Every, every night I will write yeah. in my thing my why and my yeah. positivity and I'm sure you'll come to things like that so yeah no no it's so true it's, it's like little positivity journals really help not everybody buys into that but no. I'm telling you it really does make a difference yeah um but you know these are some of the things that came up um during our discussions that um a lot of fitness instructors I, I'm gonna say fitness instructors actually this is rubbish we're all scared to go back out into the real world Absolutely. so it's not it's not just the fitness people we're all feeling like it mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, we're all slightly, most of us are more deconditioned now than when we were a year ago um, as, as we went into lockdown one. In fact, we're probably more deconditioned lockdown three than we were lockdown one. Yeah. Lockdown one, we were all fabulous, right? Because we were doing boot camps, we're doing everything. It's kind of this one's a bit sucky. And, and I'm, I'm having a lot of people reach out to me at EMD saying, I'm, what do I do? I'm really scared to go back out and teach, which we didn't hear yeah. A, lot, a lot beforehand there's definitely a, a, a an anxiety built up around it and it's again a lot of people have stayed on zoom and we've been behind here to go face to face again and there's a lot of reasons why people are anxious to go back yeah but some of it is us stopping ourselves in some way 
Yeah, and we, we will be talking about this because um, I, 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 hang on a minute, menopause brain. <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah oh yeah i'm back on track <laughs> it happens all the time um yeah we I, I want to talk about this because we are a little bit anxious about going back we are going to talk about that in a minute okay. um but i just wanted you to understand that it's fear that holds us back um going back to classes you know i'm going to talk about agile i'm really excited to talk about that with you it's something that you do and don't even realize you do it um but we are so reactive as an industry Mm -hmm. we're brilliant at it remember that um so when you go back out there if you imagine so this is you and your customers before lockdown you're at this level of fitness you've all gone down um in your level of fitness mm -hmm. so you're going to start the same it's relative so when you go back out there you'll all be roughly the same yeah don't worry about it don't worry about it this is your time to be anything you want you can act absolutely reinvent yourself now and then you can blame the pandemic for it you've had time to write think reinvent yourself mm -hmm. and and everybody will go oh yeah it's great it's perfect timing the pandemic has come at a time where you can completely start again absolutely and you can give yourself permission for it so imposter syndrome is it's there it's constantly there, and you can't fix it you just need to understand how to manage it a bit better so and and so and with that with that said the real problem is not what you are that holds you back it's what you think you're not and that's me sticking my fingers up <laughs> it's not a great throw. <laughs> the, point, the point is it's like i'm not thin enough i'm not good enough I'm not fit enough. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely not clever enough. That is this dialogue that goes in my head all the time. And then Thank I stand you. in my own power and then remind myself that I'm actually making a difference in people's lives. But I allow, and I previously have allowed my ego to rule my heart and my head. So once you, and, and that's kind of what I want to talk about ego mm -hmm. so ego is um you know we all love it don't we when we've taught a class and it's magnificent and everyone goes oh you're so wonderful and we get shiro worshipped we love that we really mm -hmm. love it but actually is that really who you are is that what you want when you die no one cares whether you've got five million pounds in the bank or five p in the bank they'll when you die you want to know that you've left a legacy and that you've made a difference in people's lives and that's when you need to remind yourself of what you are not what you're not mm -hmm. does that make sense Absolutely. am i making sense at all yeah, of course of course right. yes <laughs> you should see the chat <laughs> Um, okay, so I, I just want to briefly talk to you about this. Okay, so I'm going to take my glasses off because I'm a little bit hot now. Right, okay. Shine theory. I swear by this. I, I mention it in any one of my courses that I, I teach. Um, I, it's one of the first statements. Have a look it up if you're on double screens today. Um, shine theory blows my mind. Um, it takes away um, backbiting and bitching as far as I can see. I love it. Shine theory is something that was um, discovered during the Obama years. So his team were predominantly men. And there were a handful of women, two in particular, that um, decided that they were stronger together. Weren't really aware of each other that much, but decided that in a sea of men, they needed to be heard with sitting around the table with President Obama. So what would happen was, I would say, Sue would speak and I would go, Sue, that is really interesting. And I really support you on that idea. I want you to look at, at Sue and what she's saying. And Sue would go, thanks, Helen. I really appreciate that. But that thing you said is also really important. So it didn't matter whether me and Sue liked each other or not. It was literally about shining light on each other. Mm -hmm. And it's something that did for a long time disappoint me in the industry that we suddenly developed this massive surge of backbiting and competition and everybody's better than each other and everyone's fighting for turf and territory and postcodes and who's doing the best doing what. Actually forget about that because winners focus on winning and losers 
focus on winners. You just need to stay in your lane, doing yeah. your thing yeah. best. Do the thing you do best, and you only sh- and you'll only shine brighter by shining the light on each other. It's really important because yeah. what what yeah. happens is. It's beyond that ninth date. It is having that amazing um, relationship. And even if you don't really know or like that person, get to know that person because what you thought was an enemy, actually there will be a common ground for you to grow and partner with. Absolutely. And the pandemic's escalated this, I think, within the industry. Yes, yes. It has been, it's a real shift that it, we're seeing that even in the groups that we have or we see on, on Facebook, everyone, supporting I've loved it even simply on the webinars that on the chat which I don't get to see that much because I'm trying to focus but it's I'll go back afterwards and everyone's helping each other with ideas and we've yeah. definitely drawn together and actually the people who you think are your enemies are usually just possibly people intimidated by you and actually by bringing them into the fold you grow your family absolutely and the thing is the most probably scared because they also have imposter syndrome yes exactly and yeah because we're all stood around with our imposter syndrome we're yeah. all worrying about each other and, and what they could do to us but actually let's just work together and just shine absolutely. the light on each other so you know stronger together and you know and that is one of the big shifts in the fitness industry this last year it's like i'm all over it. i'm so back in the, the industry and loving it because i'm really seeing that great authentic real integrity around what we're doing and how we can make make life better for all of us right absolutely so um and why are you going to listen to me so what <laughs> we, we're actually getting around to wh- why why am i Give, why am I the expert today when you're all sat there nodding going oh yeah I know that I know that um because I actually believe in what I say now because I back my own horse um I have done a lot of work around this um and I talk to a lot of other agencies and organizations about this very subject um and particularly women so I am a feminist um but women, we know statistically, women struggle with imposter syndrome greater than men. Um, and there's a sense of arrogance around um, standing in your own power. So, and what would happen is you stand in your own power and somebody go, well, she thinks she is. And, and, and it's, like, it's like, no, 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 you don't get it. I'm just being me. Yeah. And, and just dial that up, fly your freak flag. Yeah. So I've been there and I get that and I do struggle with it daily, but I wanted to create a life that was um, going to be um, the best I could be by my family. Um, And I, and I wanted to understand that imposter syndrome and I, I struggle with my mental health. I I have um, anxiety, social anxiety, Mm -hmm. which is ironic. Um, So Pat, my, uh, my wing woman, um, I'd be ready to go on stage and teach class and 30 seconds beforehand, I'd be in floods of tears and she'd do hug and a punch, hug me, punch me, get out there. And then it's like, teeth and hits, teeth and hits. I promised I wouldn't swear today as well. Because um, <laughs> that's my motto as well. I'm sure I've got it off you in the past <laughs> when I've stood at the side of the stage going, I can't do this. And you've gone. Yeah. 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 Just <laughs> <get out laughs> that's what we're good at, right? We're good yeah. at showtime. And sometimes we're so good at showtime that we're just forgetting. Um, so, so let me tell you, when, when I... so. I ran a business, a health club, and it was amazing. And um, and it was all about community. And it started with me. And for seven years in a row, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and I ended up, because of my why and my impact, that I ended up being on surprise, surprise. Um, and, um, and it was wonderful. And I ended up going to work with Beto um, in Florida when I took my mates with me. And I had a really great experience, but oh my God, there was just such an outpouring of hate mm-hmm. um, that came with it. And people going, it should have been me. Um, just like, I, I lost friends. It was mm-hmm. just bonkers. So the fame from that and like fame, if you like, in our fitness community, um, also attracted a lot of people that just absolutely just went for me. And, yeah. and it was really hard to manage. Really, really yeah. so I started to believe that. 
So um, you're not worthy. Why did you deserve that? I should have gone to Florida. Can't believe that happened to you. My experience with my people was um, way better than your experience. And it just like, and it just wore me down. And I started mm -hmm. to believe it and I started to hear it. Um, and it got to the point, so there was like perfect storm, but I ended up closing my business um, as a result of it, completely lost myself in, in, in my journey. And you can take everything away from me, but you can never take my knowledge mm -hmm. away from me and, and me, the stuff that I do. So, and it was like, um, and, it, and it was literally that, the foundations of losing everything that made me really start to understand really how strong imposter syndrome can play on our mental mm -hmm. health as well um so so having lost everything and I thought I'd lost my reputation and actually that's not strictly true um because here I am ta -da. Um, <laughs> but the point is I I rebuilt myself and and then I really recognized that the people that weren't great around me at a time when I needed support weren't actually my friends either mm -hmm. who made me feel like I was an imposter Mm -hmm. and they weren't actually giving me the right guidance so they didn't really mean so when I was saying should I do this and they go no I don't they were holding me back yeah I realized yeah. that I'd outgrown them I uh, yeah I, I I'm sure many people out there will be the same that you go through stages of outgrowing people who it stops your journey doesn't it whether that's in life or in work it there is a le level of there's a limiting belief of others of you or should you are you are you really that person or it's the and that can be in work and life I think yeah. really I have yeah. it yeah and, and I'm sure so please message in the chat box I'm yeah. sure that um, um many others have had it and and you know what it's okay it's okay to move on and it's okay to recognize that they're not your tribe Mm -hmm. So these two photographs, so they're not great quality, but I just wanted to kind of put a point um, how um, how imposter syndrome affected my life. The one is actually I'm, I'm drinking fizz and crying. Um, <laughs> the fizz wasn't celebratory. It was because my world was actually falling apart. And I wanted to document this moment in time um, because I my mental health had really struggled. I just went and, you know, I, I totally fell for um the biggest dose of imposter syndrome that I absolutely did not belong in health and well-being at all um and three years later um I'm winning influential woman of the year uh, so Amazing. they're both very strong and poignant images in my life and um and here's the thing couldn't believe that I won that award um so here I am imposter was, that, was that another moment of imposter syndrome going why yeah. me yeah. I don't deserve this and what, other people and again backstory um this is two months post um a lot of surgery and a hysterectomy and all sorts of bits and pieces so i was really poorly so i had to kind of really squeeze into that dress <laughs> and um and then i got up onto the stage and it was an all-woman conference it was so cool but everybody kind of walked up and sort of grabbed the things what did i do slut drop <laughs> <laughs> Like, yay and it was really exciting and oh, this thing it was like now I see that I am a force for good I'm yeah. never out to hurt people's feelings I'm honest and um and we're gonna talk about that next but actually that one that photograph of me winning the Venus Awards that's me mm -hmm. and that is me unadulterated me Helen tight yeah. and it is it is the the person when I started to break the shackles of being an imposter I started to grow mm -hmm. and 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 as I was growing my tribe around me were similar like-minded souls mm -hmm. and and that is something that I really want you to take on board it's okay to evolve and grow yeah. and you know what if they don't like it they're not your friends no yeah oh it's all very exciting. i can see i can see all that everyone's facebook's going delete 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 tonight <laughs> <laughs> so um so now this this is like happy me so this is like yay bad story this is all the good story um so um 
old people completely float the boat. I love what I do around falls prevention. I love what I do with consultancy. I do a lot of work with the NHS. I do a lot of work with local authorities and, and also big organisations around health and wellbeing and getting older because I'm not just a fitness instructor. And that's what I want to reinforce now with you guys, that you are so much more. Um, and when you start realising your impact that you have on this nation, then you will fly and sod bloody imposter syndrome. So here's the thing, I, I, drew, I drew this up, I drew this up, I made this up. Um, <laughs> imposter syndrome, okay, we are in the art of looking and making something look easy. And I'll give you an example, choreography. You deliver that, so this will come back to that point that Sue made earlier on about you're nervous about getting back into the community because you're not fit enough, you haven't got it all figured out, it's not systematic. Um, we're in the art of making things look easy, do you remember that? So. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I've taught freestyle and pre-choreographed. Let's talk about Zumba, for example. Like seven million hours of listening to that music in the car at every given opportunity. You're working on your choreography, you're planning, you're timing, da 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 da. Um, and um, da da. And even when you, even when you fake it because you've gone wrong, it still looks great because you're a million times better than the people that are doing it in front of you, right? Absolutely. The thing is that we discount the value because we're so good at making things look easy we forget how the level of expertise that we actually have yeah. so and, and you know I remember teaching classes and I've known it so well I'm such an expert in the classes and, and delivering this piece of choreography music that I'm actually thinking about my shopping lists <laughs> And there's conversations going in my head because I'm just giving it all of this. And, um, and I realise it's actually time to move on because I know this too well. Um, and, um, and it discounts the value. We make things look very easy. So you, you must remember to be that polished stone takes time. And you guys are subject matter experts. You are, many of you, over 10,000 hours worth of experience as fitness instructors out there. That makes you a freaking expert. So please, Please stop saying that you're just yeah. a boxer size, just a club size, whatever it is you are, stop that because you are amazing. So um, can you see this image? Because I couldn't find the brand photo when I was making up this slide. What is that? Is that ketchup on toast? No. <laughs> Marmite. <Ugh>. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is a big deal, okay? I, I call this the Marmite effect. I've taught loads of workshops on this over the years. People are either gonna love you or hate you, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. So, so let's, put, let's put a couple of things together. Marmite and shine theory, okay? Shine theory, um, you're not always gonna um, love the people that you're gonna work with, but it's good to get to know them. So you might not always like the taste of Marmite, but that doesn't stop you having relationships with the people who eat Marmite, right? Absolutely, yeah. Right, okay. And, and here you're starting to understand a bit about your own imposter syndrome. This is when we minimize physical and emotional time with these dementors who draw the, the spirit out of you. Mm -hmm. So, and that is important. With Marmite, you either love it or hate it, but, it doesn't matter you've got to stand in your own power with it okay this doesn't quite make sense until i show you this bit okay because of marmite haters are gonna hate okay so and that affects us in our mental health with imposter syndrome so um this is a really i, I think it might help you put your um going back to classes into a bit more context mm -hmm. so 20 percent um we've all got them supporters the ones that love you and will follow you to the end of the earth whatever you're doing they're the first ones to buy your programs they're the first ones on your secondary sales they're the ones that are sharing and liking all your stuff on social right you don't have to convince them they know you're amazing you never have to be an imposter in front of those people because they already love you there's 20 percent of them who can't stand you because your mom might <laughs> So like, just ignore them. The ones you need to focus on are the swing voters that don't really, have never really tasted Marmite, don't really have an opinion. They're the ones that you need to engage with and communicate with. Mm -hmm. Does that so make sense? True. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 
so going back so haters are going to hate so going back to that so this is about speak up and ask for what you want create connect with these 60 percent of people because they're the ones that you're going to win over you'd be really surprised and when i say win over be authentic yeah. be you dial up you and it's okay right how are we doing good are we all right yeah of course we are <laughs> I've never seen so much interaction going on within it and it's lovely that we had words coming up like energy vampires and I'm like oh my god that is such a something I relate to yes energy vampires step away so this is it so going back to ego ego's out so to be um to understand and manage imposter syndrome it's time to ditch ego mm -hmm. it's not all about this it's honestly it's Ditch your ego, stand in your own power. It changes everything about you because it will take you back to that impact. Why do you do what you do? Mm -hmm. Ditch the ego. It really does make a difference. And to be really mindful of those people because their intentions are not honourable. No. How are we doing? You're all right. So the day you ditch your ego, get over yourself, is the day the world opens up and this is when you are authentically you. Okay, right. So on this journey that we're on today, I wanted you to think about jealousy because I look at some of like people on social and I go, oh, she's got a fat bum. Uh, says me, he's got a fat bum. Um, but actually, um, it's not just about the fat bum. It's, um, we, we think, okay, I'm going to say the word to Joe Wicks. Uh, mm -mm. <clears throat> Yeah. I'm keeping, I'm refraining. <laughs> okay, so um, so here's the thing, right? Um, I'm five foot ten um, and I'm all curves these days, but I'm blessed I've got great genes, okay? And I'm constantly told that I'm this glamorous, glamours on, da 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 da. But it puts a lot of people off because I get, she's gorgeous, she don't want to be with me, or she's, she's, and I've heard this beautiful women um, do well in life. Um, so we're not going to let her have that contract. I've heard it. Wow. Um, she doesn't deserve it because she's beautiful. Um, that's only what, and, and it's not that projection for me because when you know me, that is absolutely not who I am. Mm -hmm. um, but actually jealousy can wreck you. So when you start thinking about in imposter syndrome, also think about what you're projecting out about others and remember that shine theory so so when you meet a woman who's intimidatingly witty stylish beautiful and professionally accomplished like you will think because it doesn't dull your sparkle it just makes you shine brighter mm -hmm. so and and actually and and i heard that so much before and i have the most amazing bunch of people in my life now because we all support each other it's Absolutely. not just about the looks but it's about bigging us all up so oh there you go so so coming back to the shine theory and the imposter syndrome you only shine when you shine the light on each other and this is this is like you going this is me yeah Got it. This is what we came up when we were talking about this, wasn't it? I said, um, it's that song, This Is Me. I, <laughs> If I'm having a bad day, I there's certain songs that I, pop, I put on and This Is Me and it reminds me to kind of go, right, no matter what's going on, stand in your power. Yes. Balancing in my head, stand in my yeah. power, girl. Yeah. Um, this Is Me, you yeah. know, so... So you, you, we're nearly through, by the way. We're, we're, I know we've got lots of questions. So your takeaway is if you've got this, surround yourself by your tribe. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there's been that lovely shift in fitness and leisure where we're all starting to like work together. Um, I've got little groups, so you're more than well, yeah, come and say hello to me because we, we have groups and we talk, it's not just fitness, it's talk about business, we talk about approach, um, authenticity, um, expanding bubbles. Like, just hang out, have a cup of tea with me. Yeah. And here's the thing, because I know Sue was asking this question earlier on um, over the previous days. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to do a little bit of work with you. OK, so get your pens out. Um, there's this there's actually a program, um, a, a piece of um, 
program software and a, a principle called Agile. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know if anybody's actually heard of it, but Agile um, Agile is a really cool thing. Look it up on Google. Um, it's program management. Um, and, and actually us in the fitness industry are freaking brilliant at this stuff. Agile is persevere or pivot. Mm -hmm. So in our context, carry on doing that class, numbers dwindle, switch classes. That's what we would do, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we are really good at agile and agile was pandemic started. We all went community digital. That's agile in its mm -hmm. best form. So you're really doing a really cool thing, believe it or not. You're all right. You're doing really, really well. So agile is, and so bring it back into context of in, in, imposter syndrome and you grow it and building to be agile really helps you grow and evolve and not because you're doing stuff and and if it's not working change it so from an imposter syndrome point of view you think you're out of the depth why are you out of your depth why do you think you're not good enough so go back try it try it when it's broken polish it try it again it's less broken polish mm -hmm. it try it again then you've got it and that that's brilliant so don't ever ever whatever you do never wait until it's polished and perfect start now minimal viable product is the best way forward whip it through get it done fix it start again does that make sense yep yeah, I use it even in work what I'm doing now. It's an 80-20 rule. I get 80% there. Am I going to sit there and wait another three weeks to get it out? Or do yeah. I just roll with it and make amends if need be? Yeah, roll with it. Yeah, roll too much. Because because what's gonna what's the worst thing that could happen? Huh. That's the thing. It's yeah. like don't cast cast catastrophe. Catastrophe. Catastrophize. That's, That's the word. word. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Don't catastrophize over it. So, yeah. um, yeah, give it a go. If it doesn't work, either polish it or ditch it. So mm -hmm. agile is really important. And that will help you again managing that imposter syndrome. So not good enough. I'm going to test the water, see how that feels. Really surprised by the reaction. I'm going to do more of that. Feed your soul, not your ego. Yeah. Okay. This one, we've got a few more, two, three more slides to go. Okay. So this one, this is, I'm going to say probably the biggest part of imposter syndrome. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's so important. And I, and, and it was mentioned once to me um, when I'd lost everything and I was just starting to rebuild my life again. Um, what I heard was, Helen, you're not actually back in your own horse. You could be saying something, but you're not breathing it. And it shows when someone's, there is an element of faking it till you make it, but there's sometimes you can say that you're doubting your own ability. Yeah. And therefore it really does show. I've seen it when yeah. someone's saying, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost like for the rest of you out there, it's almost like you're on stage. Mm. And when you rock up and your, your body language, if, if we rocked up to classes going, Hi, my name's Sue. I'm here to teach. We have to back <gasps> ourselves going, showtime. Hi, yeah. everybody. And be, make it big. And we have to believe ourselves to yeah. get it across to people. We can't. Yeah. So we have to do that mentally yeah. with what we're bringing to the table as well. Yeah. And, and you'll find that with imposter syndrome, we do that all the time. We talk ourselves down. Um, we, you know, there's always that leap of faith. And on that cliff, we talk ourselves down. Oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not back in my own horse. Mm -hmm. So again, so you write it down, you know, I back myself. I believe in myself. I believe in everything that I'm doing. And, you know, for a while I wasn't, I was running a, a business that was driven by ego and it was going in not the direction I wanted to be in. Um, and it, and it, it played itself out so the business closed so you know pivot i'm now on track i'm actually doing the thing i want to do i align with people that i want to work with um so i'm not taking any old person anymore it's i know i'm going to stand in my in my power mm -hmm. with my integrity and i'm gonna do the thing that i want to do um, and it's changed me completely changed me and i tell you why because i've dialed it up so the thing that I'm good at is old people. Um, I'm getting older. I know healthy aging. I know this subject. I know falls prevention. My Everything we do is around getting older. But I'm a bit weird, a bit more Marmite, but I'm dialing it up. More of it. 
and 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 so you imposters don't dial it up stand in your own power it's so important it's the thing that makes you different because we're not all the same we're not all fitness instructors we are fabulous wellness professionals that are changing the world and when the doors open soon in the next couple of weeks months the world is going to change and we are going to be taking it on and what makes the stand out dial it up make yourself even more fabulous mm -hmm. so this is kind of what i've talked about in the last you know the last hour there's like six elements to it again you're more than welcome to this stuff it's not a secret you know shine um yeah. take this stuff but you know i believe in you and i want you to believe in you so it, it's all there know you why keep coming back to why you do what you do because that is your driver that is the thing that makes you go that's why i got up this morning because i absolutely believe in what i am doing and i don't have all the answers yet Mm -hmm. but I'm going to so do it and you know what I'm going to do I'm going to evidence the shit out of it because that power that impact on what I'm having is the thing that's going to get me more contracts more business and more customers and we need that to power mortgages right mm -hmm. and if it doesn't work I'm going to switch direction um and you know what for all the good that's going on in your life if you don't shout about it nobody will ever know so it's Brilliant. important when you are standing in your power to share what you're doing, tell the story. And I tell you, all the fitness instructors that I know in this land are great storytellers. We care deeply and it's so important to tell each other stories. And whilst I'm saying that, just as we round up, I just want to do this with you. I don't care if, you're, if you've got 700 certifications around what you do. I really don't care. So you can be exercise level one, two, three, four, seven. You could have done five million courses, all important, right? They mm -hmm. hard skills. What I really care about is your leadership and you've all been in front of a classroom. So don't tell me that you can't lead. Don't tell me that you haven't got a good reputation because you must have a reputation to teach fitness classes in the first place, right? Absolutely. Network, your alliances, so the people that you are seen with will really help you. These are your soft skills. This is the stuff that makes you stand out. So it's not, I don't care about your qualifications. I want to know that you care about me, the person. I don't care about the task that you're delivering. I just need to know that you care about me so much that you are going to change my world. Mm -hmm. And that is why imposter syndrome is so important to understand because you have that 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 connection you are so talented as a, a fitness instructor and i don't know most of you but i'm telling you this in order to be a fitness instructor in the first place you have to care absolutely that is the thing that has got to stand out that is the connection that um that is some imposter syndrome your soft skills are the things that will take you out of your fitness studio into businesses into corporations become an influencer why not you don't have to be perfect you just need to care and that will really completely rev revolutionize everything about you as soon as you shared all of that crappy stuff you will start to shine i promise i promise i promise mm. so at the beginning when i talked about promises i said um um i said to you about feeling um standing in your own power back your own horse Okay, so in order to stand in your own power, flipping well, believe in yourself. And when I said about scaling and spreading your business, measure the impact. So that's not 15 people turned up my, uh, to my class. It's 15 people turned up to my class, 15 people paid. They have told X amount of people, their fitness has improved from this to this. They're socially engaged. They're no longer socially isolated or excluded. Their mental well-being is improving. There's a, a gazillion things that you can ask to change and create impact record it because the people up in the, the upper echelons that sue deals with want to know about your impact absolutely so. and I'll, I'll pop in with that it's one of the things that's lacked for us not having that measurable achievement of what we've done in the past has, yeah. has really restricted what we've been able to get through through government so we yeah. need now 
us all to be going like we it drops on from the cause webinar last week when we're going oh, back so if, if you haven't seen it go and watch it but i've done a re-recording of more questions from it afterwards but the we need to be measuring even if it is a when you start back let's measure the fitness and after six weeks let's see how it's been again whether it's just a simple fitness test that would be yeah. amazing just that uh, yeah. we can start measuring it and actually it makes you change the way you're thinking about yourself you'll focus purely on bums on seats in the past yeah and you will get over your imposter syndrome if you start looking at that wider field because it's not just about yeah. 15 people 20 people yeah. it's about person change lives so ask them about social value is so have a look at social value calculator um social value is really important um it is the way of the future particularly when it comes to funding opportunities which mm -hmm. i'm very skilled at um yeah social impact is so so important in fact we're as an organization we're trying to become a b corp organization so no, nobody told me about this the cic's limited company b corp is about how i can make the life of my staff happy how i can make an impact on um, the environment not massive um but how i can um uh change my governance so authenticity imposter syndrome out authenticity in that's kind of like the values the heart of everything i do and then the two big ones which i'm massively making an impact on uh my customers and my community i'm changing the world and i'm doing it as a b corp and i'm telling you if you don't know what i'm talking about please contact me and talk about it because it's the thing that the country's asking for what is your your impact and i'm telling you park imposters honestly and and really understand the importance of evidence okay talk your voice down you know when you wake up in the morning and you go oh, crappy day oh my god i'm sore or whatever it is enough of that have a little word with yourself see i've just got all chicago neck rolling um have a, have a little word with yourself because it's so easy to talk yourself out of things it's it's hard to do stuff but you know push out of that comfort zone each day and really work on expanding um your bravery challenge yourself each day and there's a million memes about it as well you know out of comfort zones and whatnot but turn mm. dial it down turn down that crappy little voice that says you you're not worthy um and then and then i'm going to reinforce that winners focus on winning stay inch wide know your why stay mile deep know your subject matter and stay there don't get distracted by all the glittery sparkly things that come up in your life really focus on why you do what you do and you're going to change the world i swear to god and then and that will stop you freezing and it will just keep you driving forward one little time one little bite at a time brilliant that's amazing. But Helen, that's made I, I feel very positive about it after I, I always do when I speak to you, whenever I pick up the phone. So um I, I think everyone's fun. I've got a few questions actually before we finish off. Is that all right, Helen? Yeah, yeah, right go for it. Yeah, okay. Got okay. Um, so I think you've answered one of them already, but are there support groups for people with imposter syndrome? Oh, I don't know. Um you. I tell you what, <laughs> me. <laughs> you, Helen, another oh, job you can take on totally we can form our own club honestly because there's enough of us quite frankly Absolutely. Yeah, totally. come and contact me i like like sue said it's i i am very enthusiastic and my and uh, the ripple effect from my energy is quite strong yeah. so yeah yeah Let's come, set one up. come and have a kutch with me and i'll set one up kutch, look at a blesser um okay as so they're all coming in now so what top tips would you give someone new to the industry just qualified in lockdown client turning aspiring teacher how to kick off my teaching ambitions as we emerge from lockdown. Oh, how exciting. So the, I, I suppose my first question is, why did you get into the business? I'm assuming it's because you really liked it. You had a bit of time off and thought this is the right time to do it. Um, yeah, what, what would I say? Imposter syndrome. Do you know what? Sasha Fierce, pants of power. So in the, <laughs> this is true, before I ever go on stage to do any public speaking, I do a couple of things, you know, the Tony Robbins thing where you like put your arms out really wide and da -da, power stance. Yeah, I yeah. actually visualize putting on Wonder Woman knickers. <laughs> So I literally, uh, one <laughs> leg and the other, yeah. uh, and, and I put on my pants to power because 
you, honestly, when you're starting out as a newbie, you can be whoever, whoever you want, whatever yeah. you want to be. So everybody, all fitness instructors, I'm sure will tell you this, that you have your showtime face. Mm -hmm. you can, you've totally got the world ahead of you. So welcome to the industry, grab it, embrace it and have the most awesome time with it, but own it and stand in your own power with it. Excellent. Yeah. And also start small. Don't give yourself a big, huge task that's unachievable. Smart, yeah. measurable, achievable results, time bound. Start <laughs> small. <laughs> um, there's a question which you've answered already, but she may have jumped on later. Where are you from, Helen? Cardiff. So I'm from Cardiff, living in Cornwall. OK, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, that's a different question for you to throw in. Um, uh, OK, my fear is that my body image, I'm a large lady and in the fitness industry, I'm not the perceived skinny fit looking person. How oh. do you deal with people who judge you on your looks? Oh, honey. And in your power. It's Oh my God, it's my favorite subject, body <laughs> image. Um, honestly, I was called a fat cow um, and um, and it absolutely broke my heart when that first happened. My size has fluctuated over the years. Now I'm five foot 10. I've been like size 14, strong power lifter. And I've gone all the way up to size 22 and back down again and hormone, you name it. But you know what? You're realistic, it doesn't matter putting yourself in front of a group of people is such a bold and amazing thing in the first place so well done yeah. don't worry about it do you so your participants are so worrying about just keeping up with what they're doing they haven't got time to care about the size of your backside honestly stop worrying about that yeah you're amazing and you are a role model people will see you and go she's achievable i can be like her so yeah. don't worry about your size never worry about your size you're magnificent you're in front of a room inspiring others important good girl um how do you break out of being frozen where do i start cha 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 <laughs> step back first step back seriously it's like the, it is literally a cha 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 um come and have a chat with me um you're more than welcome but sometimes when you're frozen it might be that you're so deep in it you can't mm -hmm. see the wood of the trees this Ooh, is when it, i do that i yeah. do that all the time i have to take a step back for a couple of hours go for a walk or yeah. even for a, a week to reinvent what why can't i move forward it's just because absolutely can't see the wood of the trees and, and you know what, when I talk to you about ditching people that might not be your friends, surround yourself with critical friends, the ones that go, mate, that's brilliant, or mate, need to have a little word. Um, sit with your think tank, sit, sit with your critical friends and, and talk it through. Draw, I draw on walls, so I put post-it notes on the walls and go, why, why, why is there this <laughs> I yeah. have post-it notes here and I live <laughs> by them for my positivity. But, but, so for me, if you're freezing, that's telling me that something's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be that this is your agile time where you need to go, actually, I'm not going to persevere there. I am going to pivot. Mm -hmm. So really come back to why. Why are you frozen? Um, there must be something going on here that's going to stimulate change. That's a good thing. Good. Well, I'm going to finish on one question, then I've got two comments that will make you have a little giggle at the end. Well, not comment, but I think they're lovely what people have come back to. But for, first... Um, I became an instructor only recently in my golden years. My imposter syndrome is very much a case, a case of feeling, what the hell am I doing competing with these young, super fit, popular instructors? <gasps> no, no. Oh, my God. Welcome. Oh, my God. Um, I'm telling you this. Midlife, so us 50-somethings and beyond, fastest growing demographic in the world, okay? We need more midlife and beyond, sunshine years, whatever you call it. We need more of those in the industry. Tell you what, give us a call because I'm always looking for older instructors. It's kind of so your customers can, it's real, isn't they, it? They can relate yeah. to it. Yeah, absolutely. 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 And then I'm going to finish off with two. Where so basically, you better start getting your business head on. Do you have a podcast, Helen? Oh, I've just started. We're practicing. Me and Pat Taylor. Okay. My, nickname, my, my nickname is the Wellness Anarchist. Okay. Yeah, um, I know that one. Yeah. And um, yeah, we um, we we are doing them, but we we started banking up a collection, um, but we're not quite ready to push them out there. Okay. So, so that you've got a fan club. Ready. You've got definitely got a fan club coming here, and <laughs> <laughs> I love this one from Jane. Jane, you making me giggle. I'm not sure I can say it without giggling out loud. If Helen could call me up every morning and remind me of this, it would be great. 
<laughs> it's true. I've got a whole bunch of people that I do that to. Um, so yeah, get in touch with me, and I, I will. I will. So how are you doing? Yeah, we so, will yeah. just need. We definitely need like a download of your voice every morning. And I, I, I actually say to Helen, this is like because of friends. Like, the voice is always there when I'm doubting it. So we need your, you know, like a ringtone. And in your power, you got it. <laughs> in your power, fly your freak flag. Yes. <laughs> Get your power pants on. So, girls, every time you go up, oh, everyone's on the call, guys or whatever. Next time you have a bit of imposter syndrome, I want you all thinking straight away about putting your power pants on. You have, yes, someone Susie Hopkins saying you have to sell power pants. We oh, that's a great <laughs> idea. It's a great idea. I'll take that with me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, I, I've really, really enjoyed this. And I always do speaking to you, Helen. And um, it's, it's a subject probably a lot of people haven't wanted to discuss it again because it's imposter syndrome. It's pushed to the side and we don't discuss it. Helen and I are very open and discuss it between each other a lot. And we just want to be able to, as part of your development as instructors, is just tackle it and actually understand how amazing you are. I'm I'm inspired by you. I put a post out yesterday saying it's a year and I think you're phenomenal. And my why completely is all of you. Because yeah, yeah. you going out and making those changes and pivoting has inspired me to keep going and keep chomping away and being able to deliver these things for you. And Helen, I just thought was such an important one. So Helen, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I think you have a much larger fan club now. <laughs> Much, much bigger. <laughs> Actually, you can find me on all the socials. I, 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 you know, Google me, you'll see Helen Tight, tip with yeah. me. Um, so that one's really easy. But I care and move and I care and move coaching academy. The, the coaching academy we've recently separated. Okay. Um, so we've just started um, coming back into the fitness industry, teaching um, some classes. We've just been endorsed with you with pileability, um, which is around movement, messy movement for midlife. Um, but we we work extensively in midlife and we deliver a lot of services for the NHS and for the councils. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm always happy to have a conversation so um remember what i said about shine theory just email me or you know I, I can't always answer there and there but i promise i always do get back to people and and we can have a chat and it just might be enough to send you on the next stage of your journey absolutely more than welcome and then as i say shine theory is so important for me if i know i've made a difference in your life then i know i can sleep at night absolutely i'm there with you as well Helen, thank you so much. I, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm, I, well, we'll chat again sometime very soon, I'm sure. Um, just a reminder, um, next week, um, just to finish off, we've got special thanks to our wonderful guest, obviously. And next week, we've got Anna Martin joining us to help you with your social media engagements for Group X. So that's for next week. Um, Helen's going to be sharing the presentation with us. And then with the normal, what we normally do, we send out our post- um, webinar follow-up email it will be included in that and um, if there's any links Helen wants to share with us we can add to it just take it back to her um, just a little reminder anyone who did do the cause webinar well if you haven't seen it go and watch it it's very interesting about long covid I recorded yesterday um, what ended up being another 45 minutes with Dr Cole with your questions and answers so we will be posting that out when I get it back from them because they recorded it yesterday so we're following up with that so Thank you very much, everybody. Again, Helen, it's been incredible. It's been a very inspiring one. I hope everyone else feels inspired as well, too. Thank you.